Welcome to the Kitsap Publishing Deep Dive Podcast with myself, Jack Bennett, and Emily Waters. Join us as we explore books, current events, history, politics, health, and more. Let's dive in. Okay, so we're back uh, for another deep dive, and this time we're diving deep into Sheer Water Storm, this really captivating new novel by Arthur Weiner. Yes. Um, and, you know, on the surface, it seems like a simple premise. You've got Charlotte seeking refuge on this remote island with her husband away, and then, boom, this mysterious sailor washes ashore. But there's so much more to it than that, and I think that's what we're going to kind of unpack today. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, one of the things that makes it so compelling is that we get right inside Charlotte's head, right from the first page. You really feel that uh, isolation, the longing. It's all there. Yeah, and speaking of being there, can we talk about Cambria Island for a second? Because, wow, the way Weiner describes it, it's like this tiny little haven in the middle of nowhere, but also kind of unnerving at the same time with those treacherous reefs and just a handful of people living there. Right. It's almost like the island itself is a reflection of Charlotte's, you know, inner state. Totally. Like, she's seeking this peaceful existence, but there's all this kind of wild beauty surrounding her. And it's not always so peaceful, is it? Yeah. And Weiner, he really uses the setting to kind of echo Charlotte's emotions. Mm. I mean, think about that scene with her garden. Oh, yeah. It shows her practical side, right? Yeah. That she can nurture things. But there's also that sense of something missing. Yeah. You know, and then you've got that room, the one she uses as her art studio, with just that single painting on display. And that's not an accident, is it? Not at all. Oh. It's like these little hints that there's this creative energy inside her that's just waiting to be unleashed. Mm -hmm. And then there's her marriage to Ben, which on the surface seems fine. I mean, it's stable, but wow. there are these subtle clues that something's off. Like that detail about how they used to take walks together. Oh, yeah. And now they don't. It's like this reminder of a connection that's just sort of faded. Exactly. Yeah. It's subtle, but it's powerful. It is. And then just as we're getting the sense of Charlotte's quiet longing, bam! Michael enters the picture. Injured, mysterious, after his sailboat, the sheer water gets caught in a storm. Talk about an entrance. Seriously. Hunter. And that scene where she finds him with the gaff, I mean, oh God. it's yeah. pretty intense. Yeah, it's graphic, but it really grabs you. It does, and it's such a turning point in the story because it sets everything else in motion. It's interesting, though, how Weiner contrasts Charlotte's initial, you know, practical response to Michael with her later admission that she finds him attractive. Right. Like she drawn to him, but trying to fight it. Oh, exactly. It adds this whole other layer to their relationship. And then we find out he's a sailor, a writer. This total contrast to Charlotte's life. And you can't help but wonder, what if? He represents everything that she's missing, right? That freedom, living life on your own terms, just like, you know, the Shearwater birds themselves. It's true. And speaking of the Shearwater, don't you think the boat itself takes on this symbolic meaning in the story? Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. like this symbol of the life that Charlotte craves but can't seem to reach. Yes. And she even says at one point that watching Michael sail the Shearwater is like watching someone who's mastered something she never could. It's like he embodies that sense of being totally free, both physically and emotionally. Exactly. And yet, even though Michael seems to have this freedom, he's also holding back. Yeah. Know? He's haunted by something from his past, and he's not ready to open up about it. Not yet, anyway. Right? There's that wall up. Mm. It makes you wonder what he's hiding. Exactly. And it makes you even more curious about him and about what will happen between him and Charlotte. It's like Wayner is dropping these little breadcrumbs yeah. and they're drawing you deeper into the story. He really is. And you can't help but get pulled along wanting to know more. Exactly. And it's like as soon as they meet, that connection just starts to build and you see it in all these little moments like that scene where he makes her that crab dinner. Oh yeah, that was a good one. It's such a simple thing, but it speaks volumes, you know? Totally, because it kind of flips their dynamic a little bit. Exactly, like yeah. she's used to taking care of things, being the capable one, and here he is, you know, in her space, showing her up in the kitchen a little. Right, exactly. Yeah. And she even admits that she likes it. Exactly, it's like this unexpected role reversal that really works. And then you've got that other great scene where they're talking about art. Oh, yeah. And they really open up to each other. I mean, you really get a sense of their shared passions, their struggles. Right. Like, they're both artists at heart, but in such different ways. Exactly. But there's this understanding, there, this real connection. It's a turning point, for sure. And then, of course, we have to talk about the dancing scene. Oh, my God. That scene. So much heat. I know, right? <laughs> 
You can practically feel the tension. It's not just physical, though, is it? No, definitely not. I mean, it's sensual for sure, but it's more than that. It's deeper. Exactly. It's like he's awakening something in her, something she's forgotten about. Yeah, like she's coming alive again. Right. And you can't help but wonder where it's all going to lead. And that's when the storm hits. Like, literally. Oh, man. Talk about perfect timing. <laughs> Right? It's like the island itself is mirroring the turmoil in Charlotte's heart. Totally. It's that pathetic fallacy thing again. But Wiener does it so well. He does. And it's not just the storm outside. It's the storm inside her, too. You know? Like, That's she's the... got all these conflicting emotions. Exactly. And then you've got Ben calling in the middle of all of it, all calm and practical. Like, nothing's wrong. Yeah, and meanwhile, Michael's declaring his love for her. Talk about a contrast. Right. It's like she's being pulled in two completely opposite directions. And that moment when they finally come together during the storm. Oh, wow. It's intense. It's yeah. so intense. You can just feel the desperation, the longing. Yeah, it's about so much more than just seeking shelter. It's about finding solace in each other in the midst of all the chaos. Exactly. And it's clear that something's changed between them after that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's no going back from that kind of intimacy. No going back. And yet, you know, as they say, nothing gold can stay. <laughs> True enough. This is where things start to get really interesting. It really is. Like, the clock is ticking down to his departure, isn't it? It is. You could just feel that tension building, like the tide's about to go out and he has to go with it. And Charlotte's totally caught in the riptide of it all, you know? Oh, yeah. Between her head and her heart. Exactly. Like, yeah. on the one hand, she has this life. She's built this responsibility to Penn and Tommy. And then there's this whole other path opening up with Michael. And she has to decide. Right. And it's not an easy choice either way. Definitely not. Mm. And those letters she writes, I mean, talk about wearing your heart on your sleeve. Oh, man. Especially that one to Ben. It's brutal, honestly, because you can tell she's barely holding it together. Right. She's <laughs> trying to make sense of it all, you know. Trying to explain the unexplainable. Exactly. And that last scene on the dock as Michael sails away, I mean... Heartbreaking, right? It really is. You're left with this huge lump in your throat wondering what she's going to do. But I think it makes you think about your own life, too, doesn't it? Totally. Yeah. Like, what would you do if you were in her shoes? Exactly. Would you have the guts to walk away from everything you know for a love like that? For a chance at something more. Exactly. And that's what I love about this book. Yeah. It stays with you long after you finish it. It does. It makes you question everything you know about love and life and what it means to be truly free. For sure. And those are questions worth asking, even if there aren't any easy answers. Well said. So to everyone listening, we want to hear from you. Did Charlotte make the right choice? Would you have done things differently? Let's keep this conversation going in the comments. And maybe do a little soul searching of our own while we're at it. Exactly. Because sometimes the most important journeys are the ones we take within ourselves. Thank you for listening to the Kitsap Publishing Deep Dive Podcast. Emily Waters and I will see you in the next episode. Stay tuned.